I want to bring in our Wedbush guest who's going to help us figure this out. James Hardiman is the Managing Director of Equity Research at the firm Covering Leisure. So, uh, James, great to have you back on the show. Uh, let's talk here Peloton first because on the one hand, it seems like it's a great one of these stay-at-home trades. And then the other story this morning, I had to like read it twice to make sure I read it right. They had to stop their live classes because one of their employees tested positive for COVID-19, but it's all online. So walk me through it. Is this like a real meaningful thing for the stock? Yeah, so uh, a couple things. It's, it's two stories that we're, we're sort of merging together here. Friday, they announced uh, that one of their employees had tested positive for coronavirus. They were, they were uh, closing the New York studio for a few days uh, with it expected to open back up tomorrow. I think they sort of thought through things over the course of the weekend, and today they announced that both their New York and their London studios were going to be closed through the end of, of the month. Um, how significant is that? Well, um, they do have thousands of classes that are on demand. That's one of the benefits of, of you know, creating content for, for years now. Uh, that they've got this library of, of again, thousands of classes that, that users can access. The vast majority of users and the vast majority of functionality would see these two things as the same, right? A, a recorded class versus a live class. I guess to a, a, uh, I'd say a small but pretty avid group of Peloton subscribers, there are things that you can do in live classes, such as shout outs, right? If you're on your hundredth ride, for example, the instructor will call out your name, and that's a big deal uh, for people. Uh, but for the most part, you're essentially doing the same thing. Okay, so uh, in, in the meantime, it's not a great headline on a day where some of these kind of stay-at-home trades are fading a little bit, the market's waxing a little more optimistic on COVID-19 uh, and the outbreak in New York. Overall, how important is that to this company? I mean is we have a period here where I've described as companies able to demonstrate their value proposition as devices or services that take advantage of people being uh, at home. But is this going to change Peloton's outlook? I mean, are people picking up more machines? Are they more sold on it than they were before? Is this period important for Peloton? Oh, I think it's, uh, it's critical. Um, and we haven't gotten any, any mm. real numbers, but I think there's uh, a wealth of anecdotal information that would suggest that a lot of people that can't go to their gyms right now or at least considering the, the purchase uh, of a Peloton, or at least uh, they also have a digital trial right now that, that they up the free period to 90 days. So I think a lot of people that are looking to stay in shape during this, this stay-at-home period will, will ultimately find a, a pretty good solution in Peloton, and, and it's a very sticky ecosystem. Uh, meaning that I think a lot of the people that tried out over this period, even when things go back to normal, are, are probably going to be long-term subscribers. So as I think about the peak subscriber number, right, which is probably the, the most important number if, as you think about the valuation of Peloton, I think as a result of all of this, that number probably goes up. Um, now, that is not to say that there aren't a number of issues that, that are hurting Peloton right now. They had to close down all their retail uh, operations for a period of time. Uh, as we discussed, um, the, the live classes for both New York and, and uh, London uh, are going to cease for a period of time. Uh, but I think if you, if you think through all of the, the puts and takes, um, I do think that, you know, long term, pe people are going to value working out more at home. What's the anecdotal data that's the most convincing to do? Have you been able to do uh, uh, search histories, results? Are you compiling uh, web traffic? I mean, if the bar is now high and we expect this to be a big period for uh, Peloton again to demonstrate its value prop, if their earnings aren't big, is the stock in trouble? Well, I mean, to answer your first question, yes, we've, we've done a lot of that. We, we track for example, social media engagement, um, you know, Facebook okay. likes and Twitter follows and Instagram uh, posts. Uh, and all of those mm. have done quite well over over the last, um, really over the last three months. It, it's important to keep in mind that, you know, the real inflection point in terms of figuring out the, the impact of coronavirus is really a last two to two and a half weeks type of a thing. And their quarter ended in March. So, this quarter that they're going to report um, upcoming, I, I think you might see 
you know, a, a small portion of, of the impact, I think as we move forward, it, it like, likely becomes bigger. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, okay, now, in terms of the lifestyle, does that mean that Peloton and Planet Fitness, are they like inverse one-to-one -one trades? Uh, the better Peloton does, the worse Planet Fitness does. Today, the stock uh, ramped pretty big and uh, obviously got beat up big on the way down. Plan of fitness, yeah, I, I, what does this mean for them? I mean, it's a great question. And I think part of what happened today is just the stocks that had, had gotten hit the hardest rallied the most uh, and vice versa. No doubt. The, the quote unquote safe plays uh, didn't do nearly as much. Um, I don't think it's a one to one sort of inverse correlation. And the reason is I don't think their customers overlap that much. Um, if you think about uh, Peloton, it's a it's a you know two thousand dollar price point for the bike, and even though there's financing that allows you to to all in get this thing for about a hundred dollars a month, um, that compares to Planet Fitness, whose starting price point is ten dollars, and even the upgraded black card is twenty dollars. Planet Fitness is largely competing with the couch in terms of uh, where they're sourcing their customers from, you know. Uh, it's it's sort of entry level people that would like to work out but aren't doing anything uh, right now. Uh, but I do think there is some truth to the idea that long term, you know, I believe that there is going to be a, a large sustained secular trend away from traditional gyms uh, and towards at home fitness. Having said that, I think that the biggest piece of the uh, the traditional gyms that are in jeopardy are the higher price concepts and, and not so much the, the, the plant fitness. I think Peloton most directly competes with, you know, these boutique fitness uh, places, the soul cycles of the world um, that mm -hmm. cost, you know, $30 a class. Um, and I think, you know, A, those people can't even go to those places right now. And B, you know, even when they can, there is a, a, a really great substitute available for those people uh, at home, cheaper and a lot more convenient. I'm looking at the notes right here for Pel uh, for Planet Fitness, and uh, I think the point there about Peloton competing with Soul Cycles makes a lot of sense. Uh, James, real quickly though, for Planet Fitness, what's the most important metric to them? I know the stickiness of their membership has been crucial in the past, but if that yep. goes static because they're not opening stores as rapidly as investors want, is that the metric we need to look at, new Planet Fitness stores? Yeah, I think that's, that's the most important metric Traditionally, obviously, a lot of people look at same store sales, and, and their same store sales, in a lot of ways, have defied gravity. But I, I would say the most important metric right now is just following uh, these stay-at-home orders and and uh, the um, closure of, of gyms nationwide. Right? I mean, that that is that'll tell you a lot about how much pain these franchisees are enduring. Uh, given the fact that they're they're not able um, in most major metropolitan areas right now to even have their doors open. Um, I think this is one yeah. of the best companies out there prior to the coronavirus pandemic, you know, but how does this impact uh, not only the company itself, mm. but their franchisees, I think is a critical question. James, always a really engaging conversation, really good logic, uh, always fitting these uh, uh, companies together in a changing landscape that does seem like one of those sectors that is susceptible to some pretty big lasting change. James Hardiman joining us, Managing Director of Equity Research, uh, covering leisure at Wedbush Securities.